Okay, guys, you can come over here. Are they coming? Yeah, they are. Cannot believe that the Klingons just, instead of hearing a fire... Le let me repeat what has just transpired. Hearing a firefight directly over their heads, they instead choose to run straight down the hallway at the heavily armed security team and not check out the lone fighter who just took out their boss. Wow. Oh, also, say hi to Namo. Say bye to Namo, because he just despawned. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Is it just me? Am I the only one who thinks the Klingons are acting brain-dead stupid in this game? Pran balances on the edge, because that's just how he rolls. I don't know why, actually. Now I would like to now I would like to say that yes, get get out of the get out of the. You can in fact use this chair. Raven doesn't know what the fuck. You can in fact sit in this chair. And uh, it's screenshot time. Eight of eight. Eight of eight is covering my face. Screenshot time. Okay, screenshot time has passed. It's time to blow this place up. Eight of eight wants to sit in the chair, too. Oh, there's Namo. Hey, Namo! Upload computer core data. Upload interrupted. Oh, hi. Hello, that's an Undine. Oh. Nobody's gonna say anything about the Undine who just showed up? Okay, whatever. Upload computer core data. Probably got a virus. Captain Sensors just picked up an Undine ship on the far side of the moon. They've beamed someone aboard and are heading into the comet debris. Please return to the ship immediately. I killed it. There must have been another one. The Klingons let another one sneak by them. Jesus! Not only have you declared war on the entire fucking galaxy because of the Undine, you're really terrible at, find at figuring out exactly where the Undine are. Oy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, two weapons at a time. So where be the Undine? Where be the Undine? Wee! Wee! I hope they fix this soon! Sir, clicking ships have decloaked and are powering up weapons. Yeah, so. Klingon ship has decloaked and is powering up weapons. Klingon ship. I know the Klingons like to say they're badass, but one ship does not count as multiple ships. Cats and DP, I'm picking up battle chatter from the comet debris. The Undine ship is engaging the Klingon fleet. Warp to the Bomari debris cloud. So you guys let a second one by you. I guess the blame is kind of on me also. But I killed one of them, damn it. You guys weren't doing shit. Captain, the Klingons are locking weapons on the Undine ship. With their help, we can defeat it. Okay. Quantum torpedoes. All attack buffs fired. All attack buffs fired. Fireworks fired. Fireworks firing. Hang it! It has been panged. I'm not even healing you with hazard emitters. Screw you.
Usually, hard pangs are Klingon kryptonite. You have aided us in battle, Vice Admiral, and I respect your bravery. In honor of your actions against the Undine, we will not destroy you. Today. Next time, you will not be so fortunate. Whatever, I just saved your ass. Captain, I've set a course out of the system. I'll transmit the data we recovered to Starfleet as soon as we're clear of the debris field. Ready to leave on your command, sir. Depart system. Yeah, good job on the Undine, Klingons. Good effing job. It was totally worth declaring war on your allies over. Especially considering how shitty a job you're doing at it. Ooh, Santa Claus. Chris, Father Christmas Kringle. I do hope his parents gave him hell for that. Let's see. I mean, I do hope he gave his parents hell for that. Jesus. Now, if he had been invent a bit more inventive, it would have been the name the USS Slay, and not the USS Slay, if you know what I mean. He knows who's been good and who's been bad. Or who's been bad and who's been good. God damn it. I can't even remember I can't even remember the song right. My childhood is in ruins. Whatever, let's report to Starfleet. What else is new? Salvage dispute. You're an interesting mission, but you are completely worthless. Stop the signal. Okay. We have decrypted some of the information you found at the Klingon listening post in the Pulse and Nebula. And Starfleet Oh, I already read this. Alright. Good work! You're making quite a name for yourself in Starfleet. Yeah, I probably just killed one of your cousins, you bastard. I know you're an infiltrator. I know it. Let's see. Alien tactical officer. This might be where Nell came from. Uh, Endorian engineering officer candidate. Eh, why not? I have to take him anyways. Good luck, Vice Admiral. Greetings, Captain. My name is Zaira. There's no room from the USS Waglinde for new bridge officers, sir. However, I can train one of your officers in an ability. After doing so, I will return to Earth's space dock for a new assignment. We'll find somewhere for you to fit in, Zy uh, Zisra. Zisra? Zisra. Yes, Zisra. Not now, though. Why did I call her Zyera? Hmm. There you go. Stop the signal. And, uh, let's see what we're doing next. Let's see. Visit the bridge. These are going to be pretty short for a while. Uh, next one might take... Well, next one won't take long, very long at all, actually. I think next one is Research or Rescue. I, that one's not going to take very long. Uh, I think... Let's see, Kuva Mach isn't going to take very long, or Kuvak Mach. I don't know what the correct pr pronunciation of that word is. I think it's Kuva Mach. Um, let's see. They are going to start getting longer and more involved and more dialogue heavy. Right now, the missions we're doing are equivalent to the starting grunt missions from an Armored Core game. Unfortunately, it's going to be the same in the Romulan arc. There's going to be a lot of missions where it's just sort of... You know, you, you're just do, sort of doing grunt work. The Romulan arc, nothing really memorable springs to mind. But once you get to the Cardassian sector, oh, damn, the game really start, uh, starts to get good. So, Klingon front. Let's see. I have to wait 28 minutes to do stop the signal, but I'm not doing it because I've already done it. So, next up is Researcher Rescue, and then Kuva Mach. War is good for business, treasure, trading station. Task Force Hippocrates is sort of where it starts getting in, uh, interesting in terms of the Klingon arc. Uh, Kuva Mach is where the things start kicking off. Uh, most of these are just sort of the same, like I said, the same kind of grunt missions you'd see in Armored Core. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, go watch Armored Core 2. Uh, go watch the starting grunt missions there, where it's basically just destroy X amount of stuff. Destroy, kill everything until there's nothing left. You know, no real interest no real special objectives or anything. Kill everything, disarm this, destroy that. That's basically what these are. Uh, 
But then you start getting to, like, uh, Secret Orders, Ultimate Klingon, City on the Edge of Never, Past and Perfect, and the Doomsday Device. So this, the the last third of the Klingon missions is where the game starts getting... is where the plot of the mission starts getting in really interesting. But the next one is a fun one, Researcher Rescue. Uh, the next one is a fun one, especially if you're grinding Gorn. If you're grinding for the Gorn accolade... Researcher Rescue is really great because, oh god, there's a lot of Gorn on this map. In fact, that's what I've been doing. Because the Gorn are an enemy you don't really fight very often. You know, they're just like the Remans. You're not going to run into them very often after this story arc is over. You're going to run into plenty of Cleons. You're going to run into plenty of Romulans. You're going to run into plenty of Cardassians. But you're never going to run into, like, Remans. Especially the Herosian. You're never going to run into a lot of them. Uh, you don't run into a lot of Undine. You don't run into a lot of Davidians. Uh, you run into a sufficient amount of Breen. You do run into a, a decent amount of Breen, so that accolade isn't as hard to get as these. It doesn't require nearly as much grinding. It requires you doing the daily missions, but that's about it. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. Yeah. Research, next time is Researcher Rescue. It's actually an interesting mission. It's a lot of combat. And uh, the shotgun melee kit really gets the shine in that one, although I'm still going to be OP. In fact, I'm going to be OP for most of this stuff up until the Doomsday Device, which is a remastered mission and is where you get the Hard Peng Torpedo Launcher. Uh, but, that's coming, but that's going to be later. I will probably record Researcher Rescue tomorrow. I, what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to upload Stop the Signal and Research and Rescue. I'm hoping to upload two of these a week when you know when I do record Star Trek Online because these missions are going to be so brief for for a while. I'm hoping to do two of them a week uh, so for as a decent sized update. You know, and it's not going to be like one session. They're going to be two different sessions. There'll be two separate episodes of Star Trek Online, if you will. But um. I'm hoping to, if I don't, if one of them is short, to upload another one as well. And, uh, yeah. I was, I, I, I was about to talk about a little bit more about Armored Core 2, but I think I'll do that again in a separate video. Uh, or I'll just do Armored Core 2 next week. Still not sure. Because there's a lot to go through in Star Trek Online, and I want to get, uh, and I want to get going on Star Trek Online. You know, I want to get... I want to start uh, going through these missions. I want to be out of the Klingon arc soon, so... I'm going to be start starting to put the foot on the pedal. And, uh, I think... I think that's all. I think I think that's all for tonight. I'm not going to record it now. Because uh, I've already got this Fraps footage sitting on my hard drive, so I already want to just render that off. It's not much, but every little bit, you know. Uh, I'm going to render that off, and I'm going to record it tomorrow after the bug fitch. The bug fitch? Bug fitch. I like that word. I like my new word that I've made. Uh, the bug fixes are patched in tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's eleven. It's like eleven forty-one right now. I was thinking, is it tomorrow already? No, it's not. Uh, but after the bug, the bug fixes are patched in, and the, all all the little improvements. They're still like in the comments of the last session, and Hide and Seek, Azure Lines noted that Season 4 took off like a plane that taxied off the end of the runway. And he's... He's right. There are a lot of positive things, though, about Season 4. I don't want to come off as overly negative, but there are problems with Season 4. My biggest gripe is the shield capacity, though. My biggest gripe is the shield capacity. It's kind of forced me to get inventive in how I play, if you can call running around with a shotgun, kicking people in the face inventive, that's really my kind of inventive, but perhaps not yours, but, um, you know, it's, like I, like I said, like, for example, the Borg. The Borg, for the first time since they show, since I encountered them at, at a rear admiral rank, I found myself entertained by them. And it's the weirdest fucking thing. It, the, like, of all things, like, this is my experience with Star Trek Online so far. Of all things, the Borg should not be that fun to fight. 
And I'm not saying it because they shouldn't be that fun to fight. You know, thank God they're fun to fight now. But before, whenever a, whenever the Borg showed up, it was a bear. You know, it was it was like, oh, let's just do this. And now it's like, yes, let's do it, you know. Uh, particularly with a shotgun. That's why I have the anti-proton shotgun that I'm using. That's why I have two different energy types of shotguns. Because, uh, the Borg will now adapt to your fire like they do in the television series. And in the films. Or in the film, I should say. The one film they've been in, First Contact. Uh, they now adapt to your weapons. but And they adapt to your weapons in a by player and by energy type. So if one player is firing an anti-proton weapon, the Borg will adapt to that, but they won't adapt to the other player's anti-proton weapons. Uh, until until they do adapt to those, of course. Uh, but they don't adapt all at the same time. It's a by-player, by-energy-type basis. So whenever you fight Borg, you always... You know, if you have a preferred weapon, like I love the shotgun, which isn't new, the shotgun is the weapon I tend to gravitate the most towards in any game I in any odd game I play, Bioshock, of course Resident Evil, where the shotgun is essentially half the fun of the game, Halo, Gears of War, etc. Uh, Mass Effect, Quake, not so much in Saints Row, but... Uh, but they're actually, they're, they're actually fun and interesting to fight now. Maybe that's not maybe that's not your experience with them. Maybe that's not. I know a lot of people have been having trouble with the Borg. I know there were some forum posts about how the Borg are scary now, and yeah, it's an, uh, their ability to adapt to your weapons is a little intimidating. But the melee kit works wonders against the Borg. Like I said, it completely mitigates the need for a melee weapon, which I like. Um, I I never liked having to carry around a, a melee weapon that never really did much for me. You know, it never really did much, you know, it, when, no matter which one I used. I used a Batleth, a Lerpa, a Shinkatsi Falcon, and it ne the Nashikin Sword, and uh, it never really did much for me. It never really worked anywhere nearly as well for me as the new three-hit combo does, and I love that. I love that I can, that I'm now free to choose two weapons that I really want to use, and still be able to have that three-hit combo where I can, like, lay into a Borg after they've adapted, take them down or at least knock them away long enough for me to get for me to back away and get behind cover and remodulate my weapons so I can shoot at them again. And I also love the new lunge. It's hilarious and awesome in a very over the top way. And you probably you saw me use it a couple times, but it, not none of those was really a really good example of the lunge. You never really saw me run up to a guy and just do a flying drop kick in his face and land on my ass on the ground. It's hilarious. It's all and it's very fun. Uh, the stun grenade is useful, but to a point. I'm not idle. Uh, you know, it, only only to a point. It's it's certainly more useful than it was before the update. On some of the higher level moms, it's damn near essential, but it's still not going to do much. That's another reason why I carry the shotgun with the melee kit. Is you know, throw a stun grenade and throw a shotgun burst. And you cannot... Something I found out is that uh, I think they've nixed the ability. I'm not sure if this was just me, but I think they've nixed your, uh, what you used to be able to do, which was fire the secondary fire of your weapon, rotate to the other weapon, fire its secondary fire, rotate to the weapon before, wait for that uh, cooldown to finish, fire off that one, rinse and repeat. I think they've nixed your, they've nerfed your ability to do that. Both secondary fires are on a shared cooldown now, it seems. Like, I, I'm not talking about, like, the cooldown timer, but, uh, you know, there's this, it, they're both on the same delay, you know, between shots now. So, that kind of sucks, but, again, if you're, if you're using a shotgun and you're knocking them all down anyways... You, it's really not that big a deal, cause you know you've got that time for it to for it to recharge between shots, and you've got the awesome primary fire. Uh, there's been a lot of bitching about the shotgun on the forums, of course, by the PVPers, who bitch about everything, everything. Um, 
but really it only works very well. Like, I'm, I'm massively OP for this mission, I said before, and I'm going to be OP for a while until Doomsday Device, and probably a little while after that, too, in the Romulan missions. By the time we start hitting the, uh, by the time we start hitting, like, the Cardassian missions, it's going to be a challenge again. Uh, by the time we hit the Cardassian missions, it's going to start getting hard, especially the mission Badlands, which I think is the first Cardassian mission, actually. Hmm, is it? That's an interesting question to answer. Exit. Access mission logs. Yes, Badlands. By the beginning of the Cardassian arc of the game, combat's going to start getting hard again. It's going to start getting, you know, more tactical, more interesting. It's gonna, the game is going to be starting to make me work for it by the time we're in the Cardassian arc. Unfortunately, that means we're going to be going to the Klingon and Romulan arcs. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to be changing the storyline progression of the featured episodes. I'm just getting that out there. I wrote a progression on the site of, you know, what the order in which I was going to do the game. And I sort of wrote the featured episodes in a really backwards order, according to... And I'm going to be doing them now according to the Klingon level pro progression, uh, which is uh, Breen first, then Deferi, then Romulans, and the, uh, the or Remans, or Cloaked Intentions, whichever you want to call it. Let me go ahead and pi pull up the featured episode. So, I'm going to do I'm going to be doing the Breen pretty much immediately after the Klingon arc. Uh, Davidians are going to be after the Romulan arc. I believe. And uh, Cloaked Intentions is going to be after, well, everything else, pretty much. Because this... The thing I, did, the thing I forgot when I was making that was that uh, the plot of Cloaked Intentions does not make sense. Very Does not make a lot of sense unless you have played through the Borg and Undine missions at Endgame. You know, unless you've played through Assimilated and State of Q and, uh, and you know, all, all six of those missions, you're not going to understand exactly what's going on. So, I'm going to have to keep save Cloaked Intentions until the end, which is good for me, because at least maybe they'll raise the level cap and maybe they'll give me access to some higher capacity shields so that cutting the cord won't be a nightmare to play anymore. Please? Cryptic? <laughs> Seriously, cutting the cord is is frustrating as hell. But uh, I think that's going to be all for this time. I, uh, I think that's going to be it for now, and I will see you guys later. So, later!